Hello, Pokemon Masters, Bucky Toby here, and Bully Diamond Shiny Pearl are finally out. And as with whenever I'm playing any new Pokemon game, even if it is a remake, even if it is an old Pokemon game, I like looking out for Easter eggs, secrets, hidden things, and especially with remakes, what's different from the originals? Because while they are faithful remakes, there are a couple of ways in which these remakes differ, and there are a couple of little Easter eggs in there that I think might be references to Legends Arceus or things of more recent Pokemon history. There are at least 10 things that I found interesting in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl that aren't in regular Diamond Pearl or Platinum, or things that now mean something different. Before I jump into today's video, don't forget, if you leave a comment on this video, you're in with the chance of winning a copy of Legends Arceus in a couple months when Legends Arceus comes out. I'll be picking a winner, three winners. In fact, worldwide giveaway, anyone can win, so you can win. All you gotta do is leave a comment. Also, and yes, by the way, so many of you noticed that I've taken this from Mr. Ballin because I really have been enjoying his videos lately, and I, I think it's a lot of fun to do and to reframe it and put it in the world of Pokemon. Let's do something nice for the like button. Like, I don't know, let, let the like button know that if your three starter choices were the like button, a Metapod or a Metapod, you'd pick the Metapod. And with that being said, let's jump into 10 Easter egg secrets, hidden things in the world of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Okay, Pokemon Masters, let's start off towards the end of the game in Sunny Shore City, because there is a big difference between the Sunny Shore City of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl that, that changed over from Diamond and Pearl. See, in the world of Diamond and Pearl, something that always struck me as odd and never explained about uh, Sunny Shore City is that there's this big stone munchlax, a heritage site, according to the locals, in Sunny Shore. No one knows why this giant munchlax-shaped rock is there. Who carved it? Is it going to be in the Hisui region in Legends of Arceus? I don't know, but it seems to have evolved between Diamond and Pearl and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl now being a giant stone Snorlax. However, I don't think this is a case of someone went out and carved the Munchlax into a Snorlax because there's more rock. Snorlax is bigger, which kind of says that maybe this is happening in, again, a parallel different world from the regular Diamond and Pearl, as all version differences and remakes tend to be parallel universes anyway. And just in this one, whoever carved this, I guess their favorite Pokemon wasn't Munchlax, it was Snorlax. I see you, Ancient Team Snooze. Thank you. Before we move on to number two, I want to do a very quick honorable mention Easter egg that I found really, really funny that I don't think I realized before, which is in Orberg City, inside one of the houses, there is a person talking about Pokemon nicknames. And there, where you're talking about Pokemon nicknames, they're saying that their Psyduck is called Yellow, and they think that's a ridiculous joke. They were named Yellow because of the color of the Psyduck. I'm pretty sure this is a reference to the fact that people are confused about the name switching between Psyduck and Golduck, with people thinking that Golduck should be the name of Psyduck because it's gold, it's yellow, and Psyduck being Golduck because it has access to more psychic powers. I don't know if this is a reference. It could just be a reference to my amazing hoodie. One of my absolute favorites from today's sponsor, Zavi. Zavi is the planet of pop culture where movies, TV, music, gaming, comic books collide. I have been a fan of Zavi on this channel for a long time since well before they started sponsoring me. As you can tell, I've already swapped out my Psyduck hoodie for my Team Bidoof hoodie, celebrating my run through of Brilliant Diamond version. And I love their hoodies and jumpers, they're just so soft. Back in the summer, I teamed up with them for their Let's Go Explore line, where I have it was still one of my favorite hoodies. My adventure awaits. This is an officially licensed Pokemon hoodie, and it's not just hoodies and clothes. They recently sent me this incredible Pokeball replica that lights up as you take it out of the box, and it's so weighty. It feels like the real deal. And it's not just Pokemon. They also have products for The Legend of Zelda and so many of our other favorite gaming franchises. And in fact, this week in celebration of Black Friday, they are doing so many special days. A Marvel day, a DC day, a Star Wars day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. There are deals going on all the time. And in fact, if you're seeing this video, the Pokemon Silver Collection might also be out right now. The only way to find out, of course, is to hit that link at the top of the description and head on over to Zavi. And while you're over there, if you use my code BKT20, Zavi will automatically apply to your bar get the best possible discounts. It might not just be 20% off. It could be up to 50% off. Various exclusions apply. So what are you waiting for? Click that link in the top of the description to head on over to Zavi, the planet of pop culture. Thank you to Zavi for sponsoring this video. And with that being said, let's get back to our Easter eggs. 
Number two, in the original Diamond and Pearl, Rotom only had one form. It looked like this. In Pokemon Platinum, it got access to a bunch of new forms and you could access them via way of a secret event item called the Secret Key. This would give you access to a hidden room in Eterna City's hideout, so it's a platinum only piece of content, but it remains in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. And the way that you get the Secret Key is rather than by an event, Rotom just drops it, so you immediately have access to all of its forms. I now just wish that Rotom was available earlier on in the game. I hate that it is a post-game only Pokemon. It is so fun to play through these games with a Rotom by your side. But what is interesting about this is inside Rotom's room, there are notebooks. A notebook, number one, from the old chateau describing this history with Rotom. We've talked about it a lot on the channel before with theories. And this other notebook by Charon of Team uh, Galactic. And that's interesting because Charon doesn't appear in these games. He was a Pokemon Platinum exclusive character who just didn't show back up for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but he's referenced in world as a member of Team Galactic. So does this mean we could be seeing some kind of future piece of content with Charon involved, or is this just a leftover from Platinum that they decided to keep and they didn't reword? I don't know what's going on here, but uh, yeah, I guess maybe the future will tell, or maybe not. Number three, very simple. I've done a theory about it already, but let's talk about the Romanus Park, the park at the end of the game that is replacing the Power Park and Romanus is named the Romanus Park because it is a type of flower, a type of rose. And if you've been following Pokemon YouTubers for the last five years, you'll probably know that flowers are a pretty big part of the Pokemon lore. There are a lot of characters named after different trees, plants, flowers, all of the professors are named after different trees. Uh, obviously in the last game, the big villain of the game was Chairman Rose and his brother Peony, another type of rose. And now we have Romanus, a third type of rose. I'm thinking this probably isn't a coincidence. However, the theory that I did about it, that maybe Peony or Chairman Rose started the Romanus Park has actually been debunked by some of you in the comments. And I have to agree with the debunking. There are, there were things to do with Peony appearing in the Crown Tundra. I was like, he's there to hunt legendary Pokemon, but it turns out actually part of his story is he wasn't expecting to find legendary Pokemon. And I thought this hunt for legendary Pokemon tied in really well. Although, I don't know, maybe he got to the Crown Tundra and he then found legendary Pokemon and he was like, well, now we found them, we better catch them and take them to the Romanus Park. So I don't know, maybe he still did start the Romanus Park, but I'm getting different thoughts on that. Anyway, that's theory uh, territory. The Easter egg is simply the name. Easter egg number four involved with the Romanus Park, of course, is the Arceus Slates. Now that's interesting. I can't remember why in my head I've got them down as the Arceus Slates. They're just the Pokemon Slates. They're just legendary Pokemon Slates. I don't think Arceus has anything to do with it. Sorry about that. But the point is you put these Slates in pedestals and they seem to summon legendary Pokemon. Now, this is interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, these Slates, are the shape of, for anyone who doesn't know this, and I think most of you know this, they're in the shape of Game Boy cartridges and DS cartridges, the cartridge that represents the era that the legendary Pokemon evolved was introduced. So the genome cartridge, Mewtwo's one, that slate looks like a Game Boy slate because that was Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, whereas the Rayquaza one, that looks like a Game Boy Advance game because Rayquaza first appeared in Pokemon Emerald. But this isn't too dissimilar to the Nintendo DS era games, like in Diamond and Pearl, where you could have Game Boy cartridges inside the bottom side of your DS and they would allow certain Pokemon to spawn, or even in the Dream Radar uh, DS download game, it was a 3DS download game, you could have certain Nintendo DS cartridges in your 3DS and it would allow you to find certain legendary Pokemon, the box art legendaries from those games. It's definitely cool to see those in game, a little bit harder to explain their design, but something I will definitely work on a theory for. I have a, I have a few things in mind. Number five, this isn't a Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl uh, exclusive Easter egg, but it is one that I wanted to mention because I first discovered it playing through BDSP. I, I can't believe that I didn't realize this before. We actually get a lot of references to Pokemon timelines in this game. Professor Rowan has been studying Pokemon for over 60 years years. That's the first number thrown out. Also, at the beginning of the game, we learned that Professor Rowan has been gone for four years. But on top of that, from a random Team Galactic scientist, we learned that he has been a Team Galactic scientist for five years and he still hasn't been promoted. That means that Team Galactic is at least five years old and five and four years are pretty close together. I wonder if Professor Rowan's disappearance had anything to do with him and Team Galactic? He does appear in the Team Galactic base after you do the Rotom Secret Key event. I wonder, Professor Rowan is the secret leader of Team Galactic? No, 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 that's a theory. We're not going to go there. 
but it is just kind of interesting to note because as far as we know about the Pokemon timeline, while it is kind of variable, for example, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and Ruby Sapphire and Emerald happen at different times on their respective universes timelines. I've got to do a timeline update video after all this, don't I? The general consensus is that generations one and three are happening at the same time and generations two and four are happening at the same time and they happen a couple years apart, two or three years, which means Team Galactic has been going since before Red beat the Pokemon League and took down Team Rocket. Heck, Professor Rowan hasn't been in Sinnoh the whole time during the events of Red, Blue, Yellow, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, um, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Rowan just wasn't in the lab where was he definitely food for thought it's me just beginning to turn the wheels and create a theory if you have any ideas let me know in the comments uh, now i'll get back to secrets easter eggs references that are exclusive to brilliant i'm shining pearl for example, number six, with the updated graphics, we get to see a better look at the Hearth Home, um, the Hearth Home City Church. And there on the front of it is this mural depicting, I don't know what. I've had this sent to me on Twitter a number of times. There are so many people that have redrawn it and re-highlighted it in different ways, showing off that this could be an Arceus or Arceus forms. It does seem that there is this big mural inside the church that references Mount Cornet, and it would seem to be some kind of church to Arceus. So it being an Arceus form would make sense, but personally, I just think it's an intricate pattern. There are some Arceus motifs there, and I don't know, maybe we will see in Legends Arceus some new Arceus form that this is directly kind of referencing ahead of time, and if so, it's very, very cool, but as I see it at the moment, there's no way to know until that thing comes out. And I just don't know that it looks like anything yet, but you know, I agree to disagree, I suppose. Number seven, speaking of timelines, and this is really, really interesting here. Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald version all featured the Battle Tower. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire did not feature the Battle Tower. In fact, it very mockingly featured a, a model of the Battle Tower saying, coming soon. Now we know that Mega Evolution is not in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, meaning most likely if it's connected to any of the games, it's more lo likely to be connected to Ruby Sapphire Emerald than it is uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Which is weird because you kind of expect all the remakes to be in the same timeline, I guess, but I guess they're not. And that's fine, there's a multiverse, so there's lots of jumping. But, of course, in the Battle Tower, and I do think this was in the original game, there is a lady who references the fact that Hoenn also has a Battle Tower. That's where she's from, and there's a tower like that there. Now, back in the original Diamond and Pearl, that was just a reference to the fact that, yeah, Pokemon Emerald version, it had a Battle Tower. But we know for a fact that Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire didn't have a Battle Tower made during the time that we saw it. So I think, personally, that connects Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl's world to the world of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald a lot more closely that plus the lack of mega evolution to um, a mega ruby and alpha sapphire but again it could be a whole new timeline entirely it could be the sword and shield timeline um although no gigantamax but then that makes sense because i guess it's a it's a galar phenomenon i'll be honest i really did think they were gonna put gigantamaxing in this game anyway back to easter eggs number seven <laughs> absolutely everywhere in the Sinnoh region there is this painting. I believe it is a sort of like low res version of Starry Night uh, which is a painting, a very famous Van Gogh painting. Whether it's supposed to be that painting or maybe it's supposed to be a totally different painting uh, maybe it's supposed to be like a reference to an upcoming Generation 9 region. I don't know. Personally I won't read too much into it but it is interesting to know that this picture is absolutely everywhere in the Sinnoh region. Though, might be a reference to absolutely nothing because also everyone in the Sinnoh region has the exact same laptop screens and they're all watching the same stuff on TV on loop. So I don't know, maybe just asset recycling. Number nine, we have a brand new Sinnoh myth and that is entirely new for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. When you go to the Can Live library, there is a, there's a new book just about the Sea Prince. And I think we all know what the Sea Prince is. If you look at the legends and myths of the Sinnoh region, it's not gonna be, you know, Dialga or Palkia, it's not gonna be the Lake Spirits. It looks pretty likely that this is a reference to Manaphy, who is of course given away as a pre-order slash early gameplay gif for playing Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl, where the movie Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea specifically call him the Sea Prince as they're looking for the Sea Crown. It mentions the Eastern Sea, it mentions a Shalos, uh, another Pokemon, and uh, quillfish with particularly big pointy spikes. I do wonder if this 
Quillfish could be one of the bigger Pokemon in Legends Arceus. And when it's talking about the East Sea in the ancient days, whether it's talking about the Hisui region. And that this Quillfish is maybe not a noble Pokemon, but one of the enraged bigger Pokemon that is more likely to attack. I don't know, just food for thought, but I think this is probably a direct reference to Legends Arceus. Maybe we're going to see a little bit of Manaphy action in Legends Arceus. Also, I have a theory about this. I'm working on it. You will see it soon. And number 10 slash 10A, 10B. This is in two parts. I was going around the Orberg Museum because now all of the assets in there are like up from what they were obviously when they were just pixel art and i was desperately looking i was like come on there's ancient tools in here this has got to be some kind of reference to cleavor right but as far as i can tell the ancient tools in there don't look anything like any bits of stone from cleavor which you know in itself is interesting that they wouldn't put a reference there because you'd kind of think that they would although maybe the fact that you can catch scyther underground is a reference to cleavor and the minerals in the ground that made it to anyway i was also desperately looking at all of the Legends Arceus trailers, trying to find some connection points to the items that appear in those trailers. And there are some items that look similar. And in the back case, there are these crystals that look kind of like they could be, I don't know, star fragments from Zelda or Animal Crossing. Uh, but really, I got nothing in the Oldberg Museum, which is really weird because it seems like exactly the kind of place that they would put a reference or an Easter egg like this. However, it did remind me of the fact that, of course, up on uh, Spear Pillar, they have made the image of the kind of gateway to Spear Pillar much, much more clear than it was in the DS era. And now it resembles a flute, the Azure Flute, which in the time of Legends Arceus looks a lot more like this image than it does, you know, in terms of the event item. Meaning that when this little floor carving was created in the world of Brilliant Diamond, Shining and Pearl, the Azure Flute looked like it did in Legends Arceus and not as it does in Diamond and Pearl. And those are just the first kind of 10 10 Easter egg secrets references. I do have others, but they kind of combine together to create theories or other videos. So I will talk about those in upcoming videos. But if I missed anything big, I want to hear it in the comments because, you know, all of this stuff is just great for theory crafting. Um, also, of course, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Zavi. Thank you for the support. I hope you're enjoying Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Don't forget if you leave a comment, you're in with the chance of winning a copy of Legends Arceus. And what did I say about the like button? Oh yeah, if you told the like button that you had to choose a starter between the like button or two metapods, your starter would be Metapod. And uh, with that being said, of course. So hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. I still just can't get over how much love this channel has. Thank you for the support of my patrons and especially the big patrons of the month. JD Gottlich, Michael Horn, Chupoki Atmos, Stefan Peters, Pokey Bliss, and Jed Rubin. Thank you.